Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Rose, and today we're gonna to be doing a $1,700 gaming PC. And this video is brought to you by BitPhoenix and their new Nova Mesh RGB case, which we actually will show a bunch of them right here. They come in a wide range of different colors and come packed full with a ton of RGB. We'll be talking more about this case in more detail later in today's video, but special thanks to them for sponsoring this build and making it possible. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of power under the hood. So this specific PC is actually a client build. Congratulations to Marquise for getting this, but RTX 3070 over there, and it's a three fan card. It literally just fits in this case. It's gonna be kind of similar to another PC build we did a while back with the 6800, where it's going to look really nice and compact. The case is not that big. As you can see, um, comparatively, it's full ATX, but it actually is pretty slim. I'm starting to really like that these case manufacturers aren't adding a ton of extra room for hard drives and stuff that you're never gonna use. So how about we go ahead and talk about each individual part and how it makes up this PC build. So for the processor, we have the 10th gen Core i7-10700F. So no graphics or anything, it's not overclockable, but it is an eight core 16 threaded processor and is going to be an absolute monster in this build, especially with that 3070. It should be a dream pair. And to cool this i7, which, you know, it does come with the stock coolers. You don't have to do this, but we have the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L V2 RGB. That is a mouthful, but it comes with two RGB fans, which I have no clue how those are going to work with uh, BitPhoenix's um, RGB fans, but hopefully we can make it work together well. But this is just one of the cheapest AIOs that you can get, and we have had no issues with them. Cooler Master makes them really good, yet budget affordable AIO and cooling solution. And uh, like I said, you could get away with using the stock cooler in this, but you know what? It's probably gonna be the ugly cooler. It's still probably not the black one. I don't know when those are like, they were a thing, now they're not a thing. So I don't know, we'll see what we get in this one. Now for the motherboard, we've used this board a lot recently. This is the Asus Tough Gaming B460M Plus Wi-Fi. It's one of the cheapest motherboards that comes with Wi-Fi installed. It actually technically has Bluetooth built in as well. And on top of that, it's micro ATX. So it's gonna fit really well in this case. You could go for a full size, but it's a full size micro ATX. So it should come down towards the bottom of the case and look really nicely. Plus it's all black and Asus Tough stuff always works out and looks really nice. Now for RAM, this has actually been kind of a go-to lately. This is Oli Warhawk RAM and it's 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz. It's RGB. Really, this stuff is some of the cheapest RGB stuff you can get right now because all the nice name brand stuff like Crucial and Corsair is well over $100 for 16 gigs right now and that is redonk. Um, so this stuff I think is around 70 to 80 bucks. And yeah, 16 gigs dual channel. It does have some very interesting looking like chrome and black color scheme to it. But yeah, it's gonna look really nice in this build though. Now for the graphics card, the thing that you can't get at home. This is the Gigabyte RTX 3070. We were actually lucky enough to have somebody sell this card to us and they just didn't want it. So we were very happy to have that. But this is an RTX 3070. It's an awesome card for 1440p and some entry level 4K gaming. Um, and if you wanna do 1080p 240 hertz, that works for it as well. But it is an elusive card that's really hard to find, but we'll try, hopefully, to leave links down below. And at some point, maybe you can actually buy one of these bad boys. Now for storage, we have the Inland Platinum one terabyte NVMe SSD. Now this SSD is gonna be more than enough storage to get this PC up and running. Of course, you can go with a higher capacity and upgrade this thing if you want to, but uh, yeah, one terabyte for a build like this is definitely the standard. NVMe is definitely the standard. Super fast and uh, no ugly SATA cables or power cables running throughout your system. Keep it nice and clean. Now for the power supply, we have the Gigabyte P850GM. I know there's probably like a glare right now, so I apologize, but uh, this is a Gigabyte power supply that we've used a lot. We've been using this lineup for a while because you can actually get them really readily available with like bundle deals with their graphics cards. So when people have been selling these uh, graphics cards on the local market, they've been bundling in these power supplies, but it's 80 plus gold and fully modular, which is perfect for a high-end build like this and uh, very reliable. And last but certainly not least, today's sponsor, BitPhoenix, and their Nova Mesh TG SE ARGB Edition computer case, which is a mouthful. But what we have right here is good old tempered glass. We have the four ARGB fans, which is an awesome value. Getting all that RGB inside a case right out the bat is really cool. Having this full mesh front for awesome breathability. I mean, this is an awesome case, let alone if you're building this PC or any other PC you wanna build, this case should be on your short list, especially with all the different color options you can go with, as you can see, right here. Um, but yeah, very excited to build in this case and excited to see how this thing performs. How will we not waste any more time and get right into it?
ladies and gentlemen. Now that we have this $1,700 gaming PC all put together, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, of course, this build is going to be pretty hard for you to replicate at home because of the shortage of the RTX 3000 series and pretty much any GPU on the market right now. You should easily be able to part together this system with the i7 and everything else in this build, but you're probably going to have problems getting that GPU. So if you did want to go with this build, please consider using the link in the description down below. There are affiliate links that do help us out, but you might do some deal hunting for that 3070 if you really want to pick this build up. But if you do manage to build this PC, you'll be very happy with the performance. In Call of Duty Cold War, we average over 150 plus FPS on max settings. The i7-10700 is a really awesome pair with the RTX 3070. Yes, it is a locked processor, and we chose a locked motherboard because of that, but it does still deliver really good performance. And with its 8 cores and 16 threads, I cannot see a game scenario out there that would push this thing to its max. Next up, in Fortnite on performance mode, we average well over 300 plus FPS, but the one issue I started to notice with this build is the fact that when we are using a B460 motherboard, we are locked to 2666 memory, sometimes 2933 depending on the motherboard and RAM DIMMs you're using, but that does have an impact on the performance of this i7. Going with something like a Z490 would allow you to get higher clocked memory, and in games like Fortnite, which are more CPU dependent, you would get higher results with that. So if you're somebody who plays esports titles and wants the best high refresh rate gaming experience, it would be wise to go with the Z490 and maybe just ponying up for a 10700K so you can get a better overall experience with faster memory because the 3200 megahertz memory we have was not fully being taken advantage of. But in our situation in a game like Fortnite on performance mode, I really cannot complain. I would normally recommend a build like this for somebody who's playing at 1440p or 4K anyways. Not many 1080p high refresh rate gamers are going to go with this configuration, but it does show that you can run it at 240hz if you really wanted to. And last but certainly not least, we decided to test Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and on the highest settings, we got 143 FPS. I would imagine if we tested this at 1440p, we'd get around the 100 FPS average mark, which is very awesome for a 1440p gaming PC experience and pretty much any AAA title you want. Of course, again, this build is going to be hard to replicate, but the fact that we were able to get our hands on a 3070 and an 8-core 16-threaded i7-10700, which, keep in mind, we actually bought the 3070 with our own money just from deal hunting, so it is possible. It's very hard to do, but it is possible to pick up a 3000 series card, and hopefully later on this year, it'll be much easier to do, and you at home can use links in the description down below to build your next gaming PC. So overall, I'm very happy with this PC build for the money. Also, big shout out to BitPhoenix and their Nova Mesh case. This case was awesome in keeping those temperatures nice and low while gaming. So once again, if you want to pick up this case, link in the description down below. Now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how about we're going to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. So as you guys expected, this PC performed absolutely amazing, which honestly, anything that's new RTX, you're probably expecting to get over 100 FPS in every game. The i7-10700 is a great pair for the RTX 3070 or 3080 or 3090 if you really want to. It's an awesome value CPU right now. So if you're looking to build your next high-end PC, definitely consider that i7. But we got to talk a little bit about today's sponsor again, BitPhoenix and our Nova Mesh uh, TG with the ARGB fans pre-installed. Really nice airflow. As you saw in the benchmarks, the temperatures are really good. Um, I really like like this case for the money, especially with all the RGB that comes packed full. So if you are interested in that, once again, link in the description down below. All the parts for this build will be affiliates and they'll help us out. And also the link directly to this case will be available for you in all different colors if you want to do that. And another thing that we were actually worried about was that this three fan card was not going to fit in this. Personally, I think it fit perfectly. We were able to actually fit the radiator up front and the GPU, this three fan card. I almost thought it wasn't going to fit, but we got about four millimeters of clearance, so it worked. So overall, very happy with this PC build for the money. Once again, links in the description down below, and uh, well, we're done. We're out of here. <laughs> Goodbye. So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels where we do all kinds of extra behind the scene content and also our twitch.cv slash toasted where we game, we give away PCs, we talk about hardware and stuff like that. It's pretty dope. And also do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So if you guys didn't know, we also have merch as well. We're working on some new designs right now as we speak. So hopefully those will be up before this video goes live. But if not, we have all kinds of other cool designs still. So check it out. Link in the description down below. Awesome merch, high quality, Toast Bros approved. Yeah, it's better.